Don't, to get back don't to do it to me. I beg you. No. Nothing. You have nothing to do with this decision. Where are you going? Uh, Vincent, we can't live side by side. Vincent! Our temperaments are incompatible. You must admit that. 2,000 years later. Looks like we're talking about oozers today. Interestingly enough, this creature has more information about it than I actually expected. Now, in order to understand the oozers, we have to understand where they come from. In order to understand where they come from, we have to understand the mushroom bomb. Now, if you want a more in-depth understanding of the mushroom bomb, I have a video that's going to be linked in the description, but here I'm just going to give you a quick summary. The mushroom bomb is a super weapon made through the combination of magical as well as technological engineering. When it was dropped in the mushroom war, it had enough power to devastate the surface of the planet, but was also able to mutate pretty much every single thing on it. And that's where these guys come in. These guys are pretty much the result of the mutation as well as the death of every single individual who died when the bomb dropped. Also, one thing that needs to be said is that these are not candy people. A lot of people tend to believe that the oozers are literally just candy people who were transformed after the bomb dropped. However, that is simply not true. In fact, around this time, many of the elemental kingdoms weren't even established yet. In fact, it's pretty safe to say that every single elemental was in some kind of primordial state around this time, aside from the ice elemental as she froze herself right before the bomb dropped. What I am basically trying to say is that every single oozer that you see within the show is actually a mutated corpse of a human that existed prior to the bomb dropping. Now, due to the fact that they are functionally already dead, this means that they have no use for food, sleep, or rest. Despite this, they are incredibly aggressive and will attack anything that moves, whether it is biological or not. Despite the fact that they do not require food, they will tear open and eat pieces of their victims. We see this after James is eaten alive by a large group of them after being sacrificed by Princess Bubblegum. Another thing that should be mentioned is due to the fact that they are constantly excreting radioactive goo, if it were to touch you, you will experience a myriad of effects, such as mutation or having anything that the goo touch literally melt off. Extended exposure or death while under the influence of this goo can result in you becoming an oozer yourself. It seems that the vast majority of oozers are reduced to the most basic instincts, however, those who are transformed newly seem to have some memory of who they were before. Again, James, after transforming, was able to lead his way back to the Candy Kingdom, something he simply wouldn't have been able to do if he lacked any kind of information on its location. Speaking of which, let's talk about reproduction. It seems as long as you have some kind of biological data, you can become an oozer via infection. Considering a being entirely made out of candy was able to become an oozer, I wouldn't be shocked if this is actually the case. And after becoming an oozer, you'll become incredibly violent. However, as I said before, you will retain a little bit of your intelligence, even being able to recognize specific individuals. However, you will not be able to stop yourself from trying to infect them. Despite the fact that their eyes are completely melted away due to the fact that they are continuously oozing mutagenic corrosive acid, they still somehow possess some ability to see, which is very hard to understand. I'm not sure exactly how they do that. It's possible that they have incredibly advanced echolocation, however, I highly doubt that's actually what's occurring here. Whatever the case, they are an absolute menace to whatever they come across due to the fact that they are pretty much mutagenic horror personified. And I really mean this, due to the fact that every single one is vastly different than the other in shape, size, and physical capability. Another point that I feel like I should make is that they are biologically immortal. Many of the oozers that we actually see are the exact same oozers that were generated when the bomb originally dropped over a thousand years ago. Although sleep is most likely not needed, they do seem to go under some kind of high hibernation for extended periods of time. I mention this because it's no way that there's just an entire army of them just underground without any particular reason. Now that's all the information I have on them officially, so let's go ahead and go to the speculation section, which I'm not gonna lie is gonna be incredibly short. Starting with number one is that it's possible that the Lich once utilized them in his undead army. Considering that he rises with any other mutated creatures, I just thought it was worth a mention. Another secondary theory is that it's possible they were the blueprint that Princess Bubblegum used in order to resurrect many of her dead candy people. Considering she seemed to have a depth knowledge of them in the episode James, James, I have to assume that she had encountered them before. Additional evidence is that the zombies look pretty much identical to that of the oozers, minus the incredibly large amounts of green goo. Anyway, that's all the information I have on this one. Be sure to like, subscribe, go to my other social media platforms, and I'll see you guys in the next video. If I missed anything crucial, be sure to let me know in the comments so I can fix my mistakes. If there's anywhere I can improve, whether it be audio, editing, or anything else in between, also let me know so I can continuously improve my content. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.